guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is a software tour of the Acer NeoTouch S200, which has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor running on Windows Mobile 6.5. So you're really going to get a feel for how fast this device is once we kind of run through going through some programs. So let's turn on the device, and right away you can see Acer's home screen, which is basically a simple program launcher, a simple icon launcher. And these six icons can be changed, and quite simply you tap on something and it opens, or you can tap on the gear in the bottom right corner to change any of the shortcuts. So we tap on one of them, go to change the shortcut, and we can substitute another icon. And press the check mark when you're done. Very simple, it doesn't have much utility uh, because you can't see your next appointment, you can't see the weather, it's just a program launcher. But on the other hand, it's very simple and it probably doesn't use as much battery life as a lot of the 3D interfaces you see out there. The spinning cubes and um, the rotating screens and all those things that look nice but actually use up a lot of battery life. So uh, the minimal design is appreciated. The button to the left is actually a button that launches the start menu which is actually a nice touch because it helps with one-handed usability. When you're walking down the street, you don't have to take out your other hand to hold the device to tap up here. You can just use your thumb to quickly access the start menu and flick through. And then the button to the left of that is the lock button for Windows Mobile, which will just take you into the standard lock screen that we've seen before. Okay, so let's drill into the start menu a little bit, see what we have. Uh, some of these things I've added, such as Opera Mobile Beta, Skyfire, it doesn't come with another browser to use, such as Opera Mobile, which is unfortunate because even if you install Opera Mobile 9.5, which is free, you don't get the accelerometer support. So turning the device over to landscape won't flip the screen over. So let's take a look at what we have. There's a program called Agenda, which is actually a, uh, a calendar program that works quite nicely. So it's quite simply a calendar. We can click on any day and see what's going on that day. We can tap on it to get an extended view, and then we can press the plus button to add a new appointment, and we're taken to a nicer looking finger-friendly interface uh, to enter in a new appointment. You can still get to the standard Windows Mobile Calendar, but I think this is a nicer change uh, to what we're used to. So let's close that and go back into the Start menu. Here we have something social networking, which is really just a portal to four different social networks. So we can go into the Facebook application, which is just the standard Windows Mobile Facebook application. We can go into the YouTube program, and we're going to show that in a sec. Uh, you can log in with Blogger, you can log in with Flickr, and that's, that's pretty much the extent of the social network program. It's really just a launcher to get you into the various programs. Go back into the Start menu. Of course, we have the Marketplace, Multimedia, let's see what's in there. We have Album, which is Acer's HTC-like um, album to access your pictures. Okay, so we can take a look at the gallery. We can click on a picture. Accelerometer works in this screen. We can flick to the right. Although not as smooth as an HTC device. It's probably just a software issue. Then we can tap on the screen and go back, and we can get it back into Portrait. Pretty fast screen rotation speed. And let's go back into that screen that we were in, multimedia. So we have a streaming player so that we can access streaming video content. We have camera, and we have an FM tuner, and of course you need your headset connected to get that to work. And there's the FM tuner. Okay, let's go back in and see what else we have. If we go into preferences, we can change some system settings different than what you get in the standard settings menu. So we can go to wallpaper, for example, and change the wallpaper of the background that you see in the icon launcher on the main screen. So we can go to, um, let's say, this purple one and click OK. And here is the wallpaper that has been applied. Very nice. Let's go back into the start menu, see what else we have here. Microsoft My Phone, you get some widgets that are common with Windows Mobile 6.5, like MSN Weather and MSN Money. Office Mobile, and let's take a look at the on-screen keyboard. Let's go into Word Mobile. And I'm going to start a new document, and if you've used Windows Mobile before, you know how long this takes. Watch how fast it is on the Snapdragon extremely fast, about one second, where usually it's about three, four, or five seconds on other devices. So the keyboard is okay. It's pretty good. Um, let's do, a, let's do a, a little test here. It does have word correction, although there's no way to really turn that off, unfortunately. Let's take a look at the landscape keyboard. 
a nice wide landscape keyboard. There's not tactile feedback like you get on some HTC devices. But I think with some practice, it's, uh, it, it'll turn out to be a pretty good keyboard up there with those from HTC. Um, Acer's keyboards in the past haven't been too good, but this one has a nice layout, large buttons. You get the hover like you have on the iPhone and HTC devices, and the word suggestions are usually pretty good. Let's go into utilities, see what we have there. Uh, getting started, search phone. This is all standard Windows Mobile stuff. Memory optimization. This is a sign of low-quality software. Look at this. Acer has been using this memory optimization tool in all of its devices, and there's still this comma in the wrong place. Why don't they change that? It must be a simple fix, but perhaps not. This is a very low-quality piece of software um, that I wish Acer would finally update. Basically, it allows your device to automatically reset itself on a regular basis to clear out the memory. A pretty good idea, um, but the interface is very ugly for that program. So let's go back into utilities. And this kind of points out one of the flaws of Windows Mobile 6.5. The program launcher doesn't stay open, so I'm continually having to go back. But that's not an issue with this device. It's with Windows Mobile 6.5 in general. And then we have a simple backup utility that allow you to backup and restore your phone um, just to make sure that you have everything backed up. Now let's take a look at some of the system settings. So let's go into system. And let's see how much memory we have right now. So right now, about 100 megabytes free. We've got about two or three programs open. It's pretty good. It's not as good as, say, an HTC Touch Pro 2 or a Touch HD, but it's plenty of program memory to work with. Okay, let's see what else we have. A utility for AGPS. A program that lets you have magnified icons in the title bar. And so if I tap up here, I go to the Wi-Fi manager or the communications manager. And that just happened because I tapped on where it says H for HSDPA. And yes, I'm in the US on AT&T getting HSDPA because in my area, they have the UMTS 1900 band, which is really great. Uh, if we go into backlight, this points out another problem. If you have it automatically adjust the backlight by light sensor, look how sensitive it is the pulling frequency is way too high, so you'll get the backlight switching uh, brightnesses on a regular basis, whereas on an HTC device or a Samsung device, the pulling frequency is a lot lower so that you get a smoother transition. Also, they have this setting which doesn't make sense, auto-detect back, backlight by battery level. So the idea here is that you have a, if you have a full battery, you'll be at full brightness. As you go down to 60%, 50%, 40% battery, your brightness will follow, which just doesn't make sense to me. So I really just leave the brightness on a constant sort of right in the center. And click out of that. And finally, let's take a look at that YouTube application that's built in. It's all the way down here at the bottom. So we can go to the top rated videos. We're over HSDPA right now. And what we can do is flick through a picture, or th flick through the thumbnails, and if we find one we like, we can tap on it, we get this nice little animation, and then the thumbnail goes full screen, says buffering. And video playback is very smooth. So overall, the software on the Acer Neo Touch S200 is pretty minimal, which is good considering that Acer devices of the past had so much software and bloatware that at the end of the day, uh, there was a very small amount of program memory left. Uh, the Snapdragon processor absolutely makes things a lot faster flipping through various screens and in day-to-day -day usage. It feels like a very fast and snappy device. We're going to leave it up to the benchmarks to see exactly how fast this is. We're going to do some tests with video performance and that sort of thing. Be sure to check pocketnow.com for the full review, the full wrap-up of the Acer Neo Touch. And if you're looking for an Acer Neo Touch S200 of your own to buy, they're now shipping at clove.co.uk for only about $500. And those of you in the market for an unlocked smartphone know that that's a pretty good price for a device that has such a cutting-edge processor included. So that's it for now.